here on the ground, change happens fast. Problems feel frequent and urgent. It's loud and anxiety runs high. From a satellite view, the Earth looks the same as it did thousands of years ago. We've been here before. Let's learn from our past and shoot for a better future. At his rally, he jokes about an intruder whipped up by the big Trump lie, taking a hammer to Paul Pelosi's skull and echoing the very same words used on January 6th, where's Nancy? And he thinks that's funny. He laughed about it. What a sick... <laughs> My God. Letting Joe Biden begin this episode of A Satellite View. I'm Todd Mickelson, your host, speaking at you from Saturday, February 3rd, 2024. The new year has begun, and the campaign has begun. Joe Biden, uh, at the end when he said, what a sick, his uh, lips went to the position one's lips would go to when you're about to say a word that starts with the letter F, as in Frank. And, (laughs) And the crowd loves it. And I'm seeing all of these whiny pundits that I watch. I mean, I I get a lot of information from a lot of good people just, you know, on YouTube and things like that, but I don't agree with a lot of their analysis of Biden's chances in this next election. Now, if you've been listening to a satellite view, you know that I'm quite optimistic about the 2024 election, not just for Joe Biden, but for Democrats in general. Starting in mid-December, People started to talk about things a little differently, and then Joe and Kamala started to go out into the world, starting their actual campaign. Biden putting out some pretty incredible ads, talking not just about how much of a sick... Let's see, what can we say on the radio here, right? I mean, we can say the word, but I think it's more fun to try and think of a replacement word. A sick... I don't know, coitus is a word that's used in the same... Anyway, you can think of of your own word to replace it there, but he's not only depicting Trump as that and an uh, A asterisk asterisk hole, things like that, but he put out a really great ad about Trump's cognitive decline. Now, in that clip of Joe Biden, did he sound like he was having trouble talking? Did he sound like he was having trouble putting together two sentences? People who say that are not watching Joe Biden speak. Now, let's do our satellite view, go back in time and see what we can learn from the past. We're going to go back to late 2011. I just in Google, I put Obama chances of re-election 2011. Here's what comes up. From September 10th, 2011, New York Times. The headline is Democrats fret aloud over Obama's chances. The Harvard Gazette from December 15th, 2011. Harvard poll predicts Obama loss. ABC News said in October 2011, majority expects Obama to lose re-election. I'm going down this list in order. Republican candidate extends lead versus Obama to 47%. That is Gallup, a Gallup poll. In the middle of 2011, the Republican Party's candidate now leads President Barack Obama by 47%. (laughs) PBS in December 2011, poll finds young people skeptical of Obama's re-election. Obama loses ground in 2012 re-election bid. Pew Research Center in the middle of 2011. Obama hits all-time lows, according to NBC News Wall Street Journal in September of 2011. I did reference this in shows gone past. I can't remember how many gone past, but um, yeah, this is written by Jim Messina. He was the campaign manager in 2011. He said, I was Obama's 2012 campaign manager. There's no need to panic over Biden. 
As you walk into my office, the first thing you see is a framed magazine cover. It's not from the days of triumph, like in November 2012 when President Barack Obama won four more years. It's the campaign I ran. No, it's from a dark day during that re-election campaign back in 2011 when Nate Silver declared our campaign and President Obama toast. A lot of Democrats romanticized the 2012 Obama campaign, but if you were there, you know it was a knockdown, dragout battle. Not just with Republicans, but with bad media narratives. One such narrative hit us on November 3, 2011, when the New York Times Magazine published an analysis giving Obama a 17% chance to win. All right. That's something that uh, Jim Messina wrote in Politico just a couple months ago. And now, here we are. Things are turning around. A recent study by Moody's Analytics, renowned for its political and economic event modeling, has forecasted that Joe Biden is set to win the 2024 presidential election against Donald Trump with a slightly larger margin than in 2020. This prediction assumes that both Biden and Trump will be their respective parties' presidential nominees. I don't know if you've been listening to A Satellite View, but who's been saying exactly that? Me! But I'm not bragging. I'm getting my information from people who really know how this stuff works, which I think I've just kind of demonstrated to you. Reed Gallen. Let's see who Reed Gallen is. Okay, he's a part of the Project Lincoln, host Lincoln Project podcast. You probably know about the Lincoln Project. He wrote, despite what the media or Trump's A-team tells you, real Donald Trump and MAGA are headed for a big loss this November, and he's going to take a bunch of Republicans with him. These are things that I've been saying, Simon Rosenberg has been saying, Victor Xi has been saying, and now a lot of other people are starting to say it. And a lot of these pundits that I like that have different YouTube shows like The Young Turks, The Majority Report, places like that have just been talking about that Joe Biden is going to lose so badly against Trump. Biden has no chance of winning. Of course, they don't think Dean Phillips is going to have a chance of winning even as much as, I mean, he's going to be even worse than Biden, but that's a whole nother thing. We're not... We try and not talk, we, we try and not bring up Teen Phillips on this show. Um, yeah, I'm, I am a betrayed friend of Dean Phillips, so I don't like to talk about it. Back then, Barack Obama won by 5 million votes in 2012. Joe Biden won by 7 million votes in 2020. By the way, Hillary Clinton also beat Trump by 3 million votes in 2016. I've been saying that if Donald Trump doesn't completely run out of gas, either in his brain or in his body, if he can stay out of jail or stay out of being indicted, or, or he has been indicted, I'm sorry, stay, stay away from being convicted of many things. So if he is the nominee and the candidate come election day, Joe Biden will beat him by 10 million votes, which is slightly more than, uh, maybe a little more than slightly more than he won in 2020. And that's what people are starting to say now. And these pundits who've been crying and whining about how bad Joe Biden is, people that I agree with 99% of the time, but when they talk about Joe Biden, they're saying that He's losing his cognitive abilities, even though I see videos of him riding a bike. He seems more healthy than I am, and I'm quite a bit younger. Still not necessarily all that young, but <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden's old, but you could call that experienced. Donald Trump is old as well, and the reason the right wing keeps talking about Joe Biden losing his cognitive abilities, that's all projection, because they can all clearly see Trump. Oh. I, I read a thing uh, in a book today about the phone call to Raffensperger. I, I had never seen as much of a transcript of it. Trump was already losing it then. I played you last week a recording of Trump being interviewed in 
1990, yeah, I was going to say 92. No, 1990. And he says the same kind of crap that he says now. He's a delusional, spoiled F up is all he's ever been. He does not know how things work. And even after being president of the United States, you think he would learn some things. But he hasn't. New videos of him, just more and more, day by day. Nikki Haley's talking about it. Other Republicans are talking about it as well. He is losing it. I don't know if he's going to make it through the summer. I think Nikki Haley is staying in. I have now heard other people say what I said last week. Why would she drop out? She's got to have people on her team saying, listen, you could be the last man standing. We don't know what's going to happen with Trump this summer. And again, I'm not trying to brag. If you listen to this show, I'm just trying to give you this information that I end up gathering throughout the week so that you don't have to. The tide is turning. Yes, I've been saying these things for a long time. I've been following good people like Simon Rosenberg, Victor Xi, people who are really looking into this more. Victor Xi has his thumb on the pulse of young people. Uh, Simon Rosenberg just uses trends like what I have depicted here. Uh, He uses history. And again, uh, here, I'll play you this clip from Fox News. I think just yesterday, maybe the day before. All right. We are just about uh, getting these numbers uh, shortly. We're waiting on the jobs numbers where we're expecting 180,000 jobs created in the month of January and the unemployment rate to tick higher to 3.8 percent. We are watching the revisions, of course, and we're also uh, looking at uh, production. I and got it. Uh, you got the numbers. Well, All right, let's get right to Cheryl. And Go this ahead, Cheryl. is something. 353,000 <laughs> non-farm jobs. I had to seriously double check this, guys. What a moment that was. Fox News saying, oh, we expect this. And then a moment later, they get the actual numbers. And it's two times more jobs added. Two times more jobs added. They said unemployment would tick up from 3.7 to 3.8. It didn't. It stayed at 3.7. And it has been at 3.7. Well, it's been below four, I should say, for two solid years. That's something that hasn't happened. Since the 1960s, the Donald Trump appointed head of the Fed said yesterday or the day before, there's no two ways around this. This economy is really strong. This is really good. The economy is in really good shape. Kudlow, who was, uh, he's a crazy Fox News Trumper who actually worked in the Trump White House, I think, as his economic advisor. And he said, I was wrong. I said there was going to be a recession. I've been saying that for a couple of years. I was wrong. We had a blowout jobs report, more than twice the consensus expectation. Now, I know many of my conservative friends are trying to drill holes in this report. But you know what, folks? It is what it is. It's a very strong report. Mia culpa, I was wrong about the slowdown in the recession. I mean, I was just wrong, and so was a lot of other people. So even Fox News is saying, hey, this is really good news for the economy. They're talking about an innovation boom, which is something that, I don't know when the last time it might have happened. I I mean, I I guess I could look into that maybe for next time, but I don't want to make promises about my next show because I often forget my promises and then I don't. Uh, I mean, it's it's going kind of crazy. It's, you know, the, uh, oh, another thing. Wages are increasing now and have been for a while. Wages are increasing more than inflation is increasing. Now, inflation always increases, so it's kind of confusing. The big inflation problem that we've been having for the last couple of years is way, way, way down. Although inflation has gone way down, there's always just a natural sort of inflation uptick. But wages have been going up more than inflation. That that means people have more money to spend. They have more money. 2024, again, my barrel of popcorn. 2024 has already begun, and it's already been astonishing. I'm not even talking about the legal stuff going on with Trump. I'm not even talking about, I mean, maybe we will get to some Nikki Haley things here, but I haven't even talked about that. We're talking the economy. We're talking even, even polling numbers, which I tell you to be very careful of. 
most of them are at certainly throughout 2023 were completely useless but now people are starting to pay attention the polls get a little better and better a little bit more reliable starting about now and you can see biden is beating trump in most of the polls now it, it i mean the turn came like right on new year's eve right on cue it feels weird because i've been saying these things sort of as a prediction feeling a little bit like you know after 2016 i don't like to predict things but you've heard me on this show if you've been listening i've been making a lot of proclamations going back to last summer and even earlier about the 2024 elections and i'm seeing so many of the things that i said a long time ago starting to change into coming true and i'm as surprised as anyone it feels weird to be watching these things happening like wow it really is happening you know <laughs> it's i told you i know this is going to happen in 2024 but in reality did i did i really know no you know i mean you never you know in our society you need validation by something actually happening and these things actually happening just feel weird it's very exciting um it's getting really fun. Joe Biden is just getting started. And we're going to talk more about that. We're going to talk about the unions, the money differences between the Democrats and Republicans, and even between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. And I got, oh man, I'm looking at my list here and I've gotten to hardly none of it. So we'll talk about all these things I just said we'll be talking about after a, a short break. You're listening to A Satellite View. I'm Todd Mickelson. We'll be right back. product that's killing people there's not a damn thing anybody can do about it you can't be sued so now let's do guns Lindsay. a product that is killing people a product that is killing children are you gonna start subpoenaing ceos from gun manufacturers no he was actually talking to uh, mark zuckerberg the republicans dragged in uh, well the democrats did too in the senate had a hearing with uh, the leaders of Twitter and Facebook and all these things because kids are buying fentanyl on social media and it's killing them. Uh, TikTok was there, the uh, CEO of TikTok. But yeah, we need to do the same thing with gun manufacturers. Lindsay went on to talk about how we can't sue these guys when kids get killed by their products. You know, another industry that we can't sue the CEOs of the companies that make products that kill children? Lindsay? We're back from our short break. Todd Mickelson here on a satellite view. Thanks so much for listening. Oh, talking about so many things. I wanted to stick that in there, though, because the language that he used, your product kills people. Wow. By the way, uh, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Satellite View, on YouTube. Go there. I'm noticing that the only comments I get are from trolls. <laughs> I, I got one comment from a person that agrees with me on things, but it's pretty interesting. I'm learning about how this works. When I talked about Matt Gates and that he's a rapist or, you know, a pedophile and a rapist and, um, you know, raped a, a little girl, which sounds like it's true. And the ethics probe is coming out and he's very nervous about it. And, uh, man. My comments lit up. All of a sudden, everybody was watching my segment on YouTube. It was a, it was a short segment, you know, just a couple sentences about Matt Gates being a pedophile and a rapist. And uh, people got really uppity about that. And then uh, what was... Oh, the other one was when I was talking about Trump's cognitive decline. Boy, that really 
is a soft spot for the trolls, the Mogots. So, hey, if you're listening to this show, if you're actually listening to this show, instead of just listening to a short or maybe not even listening to it, just seeing what the title of it is and then trolling on YouTube, which, by the way, doesn't bother me. If you're a troll, you're not getting to me. It's, you know, I ran for office before. I have pretty thick skin. I've been talked about in public before. I've been ridiculed in public before by absolute worthless, uninformed people. It doesn't bother me at all. But hey, if you're a friendly, go find uh, my YouTube channel, A Satellite View on YouTube. And, uh, you know, you could comment too. Get the comments going on YouTube. Let's do it. We're kind of talking about 2024 being very successful for Democrats, right? Money. First, just a comparison about jobs. We talked about jobs being uh, added and, and unemployment rates and things like that. The uh, presidents in the first 36 months in office, Ronald Reagan produced 1.6 million jobs in his first 36 months in office. The first Bush, 1.2 million. The second Bush, <laughs> yeah, I'm the dumb one. Negative 1.9 million jobs under G-dub. Donald Trump talks about his big booming economy. Uh, it was all before the pandemic, of course. Now the pandemic got really bad because of him, so he can't just skirt the blame off. The pandemic it would not have hit our economy as badly if we had a different president other than the most idiotic, sick F ever in the White House. He added 6.4 million jobs in his first 36 months in office, but more than two times more, Joe Biden, in his first 36 months. 14.8 almost now. 14.8 million jobs. But we were going to talk about money, right? Now, we talked about that last week. Right now, Joe Biden has $117 million on hand, and Donald Trump has $33 million on hand. The RNC, the Republican National Committee, has about $8 million on hand. And the Democrats have something like three times more than that. States. Minnesota doesn't have enough money to pay off its debts, nor does Colorado. I think nor does Arizona. There are a lot of states that have negative, negative money. They don't have enough money to pay off their debt. The Colorado Republican Party might be getting kicked out of their offices because they can't pay rent. Not to mention, a lot of these parties are just having infighting. Talk about the Civil War. It's the Republican Civil War, especially in the states. Michigan is having a... I'm not even going to go into it because it's such a long story. It's such a huge mess. Same thing with Minnesota. Money and organization. Well, in Minnesota, I'm a witness to that they don't have enough money to access data that you really need to access if you're going to run elections. By the way, Donald Trump is using up all Republican money for his court penalties. He has to pay Eugene Carroll $83.3 million. You think he's going to take that out of his own pocket? We just found out this week because paperwork did come out. Last week I said, oh, the Republicans and Donald Trump have not yet released their numbers. Democrats were eager to release their numbers. Republicans, the RNC and Donald Trump, they never released them themselves. They waited for them to actually be made public, which happened just this week. That's how we know now Donald Trump only has $33 million on hand, although he brags about raising hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, it also came out on that paper that he paid more than 50, closer to $60 million in 2023 alone on legal fees, even though Rudy Giuliani and probably other of his lawyers are claiming that he hasn't paid them. So his legal fees likely are much higher than that. He hasn't even paid them all. But that's he and and the way we know this is it's because he's paying it out of his super PACs. So this is donations, people sending in money, thinking that it's going to get Trump reelected. But no, Trump takes your money. If you donate to 
Donald Trump or one of his super PACs, and he's saying, we need this to get back in the White House. We need to take our country back. He's using it for his legal fees. It's illegal for him to do that, but the FEC doesn't have any teeth and hasn't for more than 10 years because of Citizens United, which needs to be repealed. Oh, uh, getting in the weeds again. And now he's not raising enough money to pay. Here's another thing on my list. And Goron is late is my title on my list. Judge Arthur and Goron said that he was going to give his money ruling on the New York fraud case by January 31st. He didn't. And now he's officially announced that he is going to take another probably two weeks. And that's because of more new information that's just come out in the last couple of days. The CEO of Trump Org, Weisselberg, in his severance that the Trump organization gave him when he was convicted and had to go to jail, he spent a few months in Rikers Island, even though he's 80 years old. In his severance, basically, Trump was like, okay, we'll give you $2 million, but only if you refuse to cooperate with law enforcement. That's part of his severance. That's a mob boss kind of stuff. That's the mob. So Weisselberg kept saying, I don't remember. I didn't think I worked on that. No, I don't, I don't remember that. Um, I don't think I worked on that particular thing. Perjury. He's now making a deal to plead guilty for perjury because all that that he said when he was a witness on the witness stand is perjury. What does that mean for Trump? What kind of a deal is Weisselberg going to work out for himself? Is he going to flip? Are you going to flip? Well, he already did like the mob does, and he went to jail. Uh, you know, I could, I could do a little time for my boss. If I don't, they'll kill me anyway, right? I mean, I was, yeah. <laughs> I can go in the slam for a little while, you know. That's one thing. The other thing is then Judge Angoran, we're, we're already talking about between 370 and $500 million. Oh, and also the, the letter, uh, we talked about this last week, the letter from the monitor the financial monitor. It's another thing that Angoran wants to consider. So basically, Judge Angoran was going to make his announcement by January 31st, and then just in the last moments, right before January 31st, these two major developments came up. He wants to take more time. And neither of those things is going to make the number go down. <laughs> so it's looking like even if Trump is using his donor's money, which he's supposed to be illegal, even if he's doing that, he's not going to be able to raise enough money, even from the crazy Magots who've been sending money in. Idiotic, poor people sending money in to Trump because God chose Trump to save the world or whatever idiotic fantasy weirdness these people are doing. They're not giving their money to the Republican Party. They're not giving their money to local Republican candidates. They're not giving their money to the RNC. They're giving all their money to Donald Trump, and Trump is using it to try and pay off his legal penalties. So the Republican Party is being completely decimated by Trump's grift of the absolute numbhead Americans who still consider themselves Republicans who are trying to get Donald Trump elected. The Republican Party is completely paralyzed right now and will likely be completely wiped out in November of 2024, and we've got our barrel of popcorn for it. Not to mention, we're really starting to see how dumb Nikki Haley is. So if Donald Trump does not end up being the candidate, which I still feel like that's going to happen, I feel like he's not going to make it. I've been saying it for almost, a, I don't know, a year or a little less than a year that I don't think he's going to be the candidate. I hope he is because Biden will beat him by 10 million. If it's Nikki Haley, he'll only beat her by 8 million because she's not 
Trump, basically. If she is not the candidate, I mean, in New Hampshire, 70% of her supporters said that if she's not the candidate, they will vote for Biden. But if she is the candidate, of course, her supporters will vote for her. That's why Biden doesn't have as good a chance against Nikki Haley as he does against Trump. Nikki Haley is saying things that hurt Trump, so it's great that she's staying in the race, pointing out his cognitive decline, pointing out that he put us $8 trillion further in debt in only four years, pointing out how disgusting he is. But then she goes on a very popular in South Carolina black podcast called The Breakfast Club. She says, oh, if Kamala Harris becomes president, it'll send chills down my spine. And, and they go, why? Why would that? Why would Kamala Harris presidency, you know, make you shiver or whatever she said? And she says, well, because Barack Obama. So she just immediately goes to the two black people, one of which has already been president, one of which may be a future president, both black, on a popular black show <laughs> podcast in South Carolina. She's saying Barack Obama is at fault for dividing America. It's all Barack Obama's fault. And she's saying it on, <laughs> I don't need to repeat it, but. And when you actually see her speak, you're just, you just kind of look at her and it's like, you know, she just really does not seem, I think Chris Christie put it best. Oh, she's going to get smoked. She's not up for this. She is a Republican and a woman and not white. So I think that's proof there. It's. I don't know why you would be a Republican. But anyway, she's at the very least showing that she's just not up for this. But, you know, she comes off as not insane. I mean, uh, America is ready for a woman president or uh, a woman of color president. So I could see, and she's younger than Joe Biden. So she's got some much better chance than Donald Trump. But then you ask her, will you support a national ban on abortion, and then she loses the election. Every Republican loses the election when they're asked that question. That issue alone, you hear me talk about this over and over again, that issue alone is going to make Joe Biden win Ohio in November. Something that hasn't happened for quite a long time. I think Obama won Ohio. But uh, Ohio's been Republican now for Uh, a couple of cycles, and Joe Biden's going to win it back. I think Joe Biden has a chance of winning Georgia. I think Joe Biden has a chance of winning Florida. And it's because of this one issue alone, this one issue alone. Yeah. So I'm looking at my list here. Oh, okay. One more thing I'll do. Okay. We've gone over time. But here's another thing. Things are really changing in a very positive way. The antics that the Republicans have been pulling for decades now are not working anymore. Here's something that happened a few days ago in Oregon. The headline is 10 GOP senators cannot run for re-election. The Oregon Supreme Court said Thursday that 10 Republican state senators who staged a record-long walkout last year to stall bills on abortion, transgender health care, and gun rights cannot run for re-election. The decision upholds the Secretary of State's decision to disqualify the senators from the ballot under a measure approved by voters in 2022 that was aimed at stopping such boycotts. You've heard about this going on where the senators just leave. They disappear. They hide. So there's not a quorum in their Congress, their state Congress, that what In this case, the Oregon Senate. Ten guys, or I don't know if they're all guys, but ten, I assume they are because they're Republicans. And again, if you're a woman and you're a Republican, I question your uh, cognitive ability. Anyway, a bill is brought up that they don't want to pass, and they know it is going to pass because they're in the minority. The Republicans just cheat. That's all they do. They cheat. So they know that, for instance, here, like a bill on uh, gun safety is going to pass. So what do they do? 
when the vote is brought to the floor, they leave the floor. So there's not a quorum. And if you don't have a quorum, you can't vote on the bill. They disappear so nobody can find them. They did it for six weeks. Uh, multiple bills that they were against were going to be brought to the floor, and they knew they would all pass because they have a majority of Democrats in uh, the Oregon Senate. These guys disappeared for six weeks. And finally, it was brought to a statewide vote, and the Oregon voters, the citizens of Oregon, voted that, yeah, you can't do that. If you do that again, you're ineligible to run for re-election. So the Secretary of State was trying to uphold that law because it's the Secretary of State's job to uphold the election laws. And Secretary of State said, hey, you guys, you can't be reelected. The Republicans took it to the Oregon Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, yep, that's right. That's the law now. Secretary of State's right. We uphold his ruling. Ten Republican senators cannot run for re-election. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're all if the election's going on this year or not, but that that hurts the Republican Party even more when something like that happens. Who are you going to find? Okay, gone way over time, but man, we've been having fun, right? Thank you so much for listening to a Satellite View. I'm Todd Mickelson. Go to my YouTube page, listen to some shorts, listen to some shows, comment, follow, subscribe. And it'll help us all out. Keep this show going because we all need to stick together, help each other argue for what's good, argue against what's bad, and make sure that we all support our local candidates all the way up to Joe Biden. If you can't give money, vote! We all got to keep each other in check. We're in this together, and now we're starting to have a lot of fun. So join me again next week. We'll see you then. been listening to A Satellite View with Todd Mickelson. Go to toddmickelson.com for links and more information.